that lovely question which you had, which is how's my money safe, which we had in pitching, um, Chris's answer was, uh, well, plan A is a sell it, plan B is a rent it. And then of course, then he asked, well, if you rent it, can I get more money? No, said Chris and I, <laughs> but good try. No, but you, you were making up for your wife's donation exactly. of additional <laughs> funds to Sarah. <laughs> so plan A, I want a decent return on capital employed and I want you to do a 20% margin or 20% markup. So be aware with the stamp duty coming in very soon and with this video, it'll have already come in. So be aware that now you need a greater markup if you like, because you've just got one additional cost. It's part of the game, keep going. You know, there is still plenty of money to be made in property. It may mean that not every property can be a buy to sell project now. We may go back to a situation that one in four, one in eight is a buy to sell. You know what? We're flexible entrepreneurs. Let's move with the times and stay ahead of it. Plan B, buy to keep. So HMO, shared house or single let, or turning it from a house into a block of flats, say, or parceling off some of the garden and then popping out. You know, we, we put um, a little bit of, a little tiny dinky garden into the auction in the last few months. I've got 48 grand for it. And that's the easiest money I've made in a very long time. 48 grand for a little piece of garden in Avonmouth. Not even in Bristol, for those that know Bristol and Avonmouth. Tiny. It had basically what, what, we, um, what we politely called a coach house ruin on it. A bit of a kind of an old garage. 48 grand from auction. Got it in 28 days. So, you know, there's plenty of plan Bs, isn't there? Now, you don't want to promise, you never want to promise planning to your partner. Never, because you are not in charge of the final planning outcome. You can say this is plan C or plan D, but you must have a plan B and then plan C or D must be planning because, you know, <laughs> planning, <laughs> it's, it's, it, you, you clearly will work with planning consultants and, and architects and your planning consultants are going to be very experienced, but nobody can guarantee planning. So just be a bit cautious. We recently had a project that um, uh, we had agreed post auction. Thank goodness we hadn't bought it at auction and, we as, and it had outline planning permission. And as we investigated further, we went back to the architect who had done the outline planning permission. The architect who'd done it for the vendors told us, literally told us, do not do this. They will definitely not get planning. So they employed me to do outline planning permission. You will definitely not get planning. So thankfully, we've, and that was only last week, we withdrew from that project, you know. So just be conscious of this stuff because it only made sense as a project when the planning was going to proceed. Okay, so gross yield as a percentage. I mean, this is, this is some of the stuff. If you look at our Facebook group, I've got this, these in, in spreadsheets. And do you remember I told you once before that um, um, Greg and Tanya, they presented back their portfolio to me and they were using my spreadsheet. And I've got Brixton Road, my little baby blue house with the aluminum roof as the top line, just as an example. And apparently they also own Brixton Road in Bristol. I was very pleased for them because they'd forgotten to take out that top line. So it's in the files for you in the Facebook group. So congratulations. Congrats, Greg and Tanya. We've got the same taste in houses, same address. So gross yield as a percentage, gross yield after refurb costs, um, I want it over 10%. Net monthly profit. Remember, if you're renting, I want you to take 10% of rent roll as cost. It's going to happen, guys. Be professional landlords. Know it's going to happen. One of my team's KPIs is uh, not to spend more than 10% of my monthly rent roll uh, annualized uh, on my repairs. At that point, I stopped spending and we wait until the following year to repair anything. Um, money left in. What's the payback time in months? This is just my own thoughts. For me, because I do a lot of uh, shed houses and HMOs, if I'm making roughly a £1,000 a month, like net cash in my pocket, I'll kind of go two years payback time and I'll still be slightly grumpy about it. So that's really saying I'll leave anything up to 24 grand in. If I'm making 1,500 a month, uh, then, and please somebody do the maths for me, I'll kind of very roughly go up to three years, very grudgingly payback time. So 1,500 times three is? 4, How much? No, 1,500 times, oh, sorry, 1,500 um, times 36, I'm sorry, so it's 36 months, is? So I'm roughly leaving about 50 grand in, but look at, look at my body language, I really don't like doing that, but because I know I'm going to keep it for 25 years, so I'll, I'll kind of be okay with that just, but I'll be really grudging around it.
Do you see what I mean? So I leave 24 grand in if I'm making a grand a month. I leave 50 grand in max if I'm making grand and a half a month. Oh, I'm a grumpy little muffin at that point, I tell you. So what's the payback time in months? And then equity created, it goes in your balance sheet. You sit there going, a leg at me, got a gold star, but guys, what can you eat? You know, fern. <laughs> when we started, you probably weren't conscious of it, love, but um, we didn't have very much money because I was paying it all out to investors. We had a lot of equity. Your mama was quite affluent quite quickly. You don't see any of it. We did not do very many fancy holidays for a few years, did we? His, yes, you did. <laughs> it's a very good thing you like beans on toast. Yes, yes. So that's just like a pride thing. But to be fair, that's also about security for your investors. Because if it goes wrong, what gets collapsed? The equity. So there, it's quite nice to say, look, you're going to lend me 150. I'm going to give you um, first and second charges on anything up to, say, 250. So if it collapses down in a fire sale, you've got a safety. And it's a very good answer to answer their question about their, is my money safe? Deal analysis. Think like an investor. Don't get caught in the romance. Of, well, <laughs> um, who's been round my house at um, Som Somerset Street? Yes, Rachel and I went round there in the dark last night. Um, don't get caught in uh, bringing up the romance of an old property to life. That's £162,000 plus VAT renovation in nine months might not be listening to myself but I bought it for um, 500,000 and it's now going to be worth 800,000 so it's 850 sorry um, our deal report said 750 so it's all right everything baby I go oh <laughs> um it's pretty beautiful it's it's halfway to being pretty beautiful isn't it <laughs> There's a copper bath in there. There are three um, um, Art Deco antique French stoves coming through. It's pretty. It, the bits are beautiful and other bits are still stone walls. Yeah. It had no roof when I bought it. Half a million pound. So don't follow my don't 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 do what I'm doing right now. That's just I'm just having fun. So th don't look at it as a deal. You often want white walls, beige carpet. You want efficiency, don't you? Um, and then understand from your estate agent about the quirk. So in Bristol, we've got quite a lot of nice left liberal hippy dippies and I count myself as one of them. We like a little bit of quirk. We like a little stove. We like a little fireplace, don't we? So you might want to spend a few hundred quid on that. But basically white walls, beige carpet. You know, I have spent more time renovating this large house because I'm going to go and live in it than I have doing 30 deals. I'm on site for, I was on site for two hours on Thursday, moving a copper bath into the correct position. That is a highly inefficient use of my time that I'm having fun with. There is no way I can run a business like that at all. And then you might hold it for a long time. So the yield is critical. If you sit down and do the maths, the yield on a, say, a, I don't know, a million turnover property. What's the difference between a 5% yield and a 10% yield every year? and then times that by 25 years, and then realize the impact of yield on your bottom line is extraordinary, extraordinary. So do the maths, guys, and realize that yield is almost like your number one juicer, your driver and your ammunition, your, your, your energy for property. Yield is terribly important.